we're going to take a few minutes to talk about the accelerator pedal position sensor. Now, when do you use this test? And we're going to say it over and over. Pull out the big guns when you have a problem. Obviously, if you suspect an accelerator pedal position sensor has a glitch, you're going to want to use a lab scope. For years, we've talked about not looking at throttle position with a scan data. And we'll show you why here. But more than likely, you're going to have a vehicle performance problem that can't be identified easily with routine diagnostics. This is where we think you're going to be more often coming here and looking at this. The engine may not go above idle, may not respond to the APP. Let's look at some of the symptoms you might see from an APP sensor that has a glitch. Now, if the system hasn't relearned the APP, and many vehicles have to relearn it with a complicated procedure, go to your service manager. You may find that the APP stalls or the car stalls on stops. This is because the APP and the throttle actuator motor, they have to learn what's normal. And until they learn, they can't perform the function we'll call idle control. And this is an idle control problem. Bad hesitation. The system has a problem and it can't identify exactly what wants to be done. It may hesitate and do things slowly. It may suddenly lunge, usually following a cold startup if things are bad. The engine may run only at idle, and we'll tell you why. It runs slowly at low RPMs with very limited performance. You may have no response at all from the accelerator pedal. These are all strategies the computer has adapted to handle unknown situations. You may run into unattended acceleration. This is what everybody's looking for. Hasn't been found yet. Hesitation. Then the engine accelerates too fast. Very common. Jerkiness in acceleration. This is common. Unintended deacceleration is common. Let's look at this sensor. It's shown over here on the right. Then you see it mounted on the vehicle on the left over here. Here's the sensor on the left and the diagram on the right. In most cases, you're going to have two APP sensors. Signal 1, Signal 2, APP1, APP2 is the common way to refer to them. We're going to take our lab scope and hook to the signal on each one of these, and we're going to do a sweep test like we've done for years. And what we do is we find that these two go up and down together. We have open the throttle, wide open throttle. We brought it back down to the foot off the pedal. Let's look at the voltage levels. APP1 is the red one. If we look over to the right, the red one says we peak voltage is around 4 volts. If we look at the blue one, APP2, it goes to around 4 volts. Now we've offset these slightly so you can see the differences in them. We didn't want you to be trying to look at two of them moving together. Now we're looking for differences in these two signals. They should agree. But one of the things we've got to alert you to is when you see minor variations like this, this is not a problem. This is just normal variations in two potentiometers. And because we put them close together, it's magnified. This is normal. What you're really looking for is a situation where the voltage goes up like this, and then all of a sudden, only one of the sensors drops down. What just happened here is APP1 dropped down, and 2 is still high. We have a disagreement on where the accelerator pedal position is in actuality. Now, we have service codes for this. We pulled up the enabling conditions off of a vehicle that this came off of. And it says the code sets when the sensors disagree. What does it take to set it? The enabling conditions? The sensors have to disagree for one second. Now, some of the early systems had three sensors to help this problem. But well, let's talk about, without moving from here and looking at this, and understand what the computer is going to do about this signal. It can't set a code because it's not there long enough. But it has one sensor saying the throttle is wide open, and another sensor says it hasn't been moved. We have a disagreement. Now, the computer has to take time to figure out which one is real. So what it does in a mode like this, it goes into limited power it reduces performance. This is some of the jerkiness, the hesitation, other things people are describing because the computer has to stop and say, 
which one of these is real. And this is all happening very fast. It's in total control of idle speed, or engine speed, I should say. Not just idle speed, but the whole engine speed. Now, the safety built into the software, the redundancy, and if you want to know more about the redundancy, we have an entire program on electronic throttle. But just to give you the clue of what's going on here, anytime the computer is confused, it's going to go to what it thinks is a safe operation. Safe operation. It's going to be to reduce power until it can figure out what's wrong. But there's another factor. If the motorist applies the brake during this time where confusion exists, that's a safety signal that RPM is out of control. The computer has lost track of where the throttle is in reality, and you put the brake on. That says, okay, go back to idle. Let's sit down and figure out what's going on. And the vehicle goes back to idle, and it may not come back off idle until you shut the engine off and restart it. If you're hearing symptoms like this, what you may be working on is an APP problem like this. And we've had numbers of our shops tell us they've seen this problem. When they replaced the APP, after we diagnosed them like this, they corrected it. So this is why I would tell you when you use this. A little more complicated. Let's look at more of what you're going to be seeing. Here's a different vehicle. It's got two APP signals. APP1 is at the top. Let's take it over and see what it reads. At wide open throttle, it reads around 4 volts. APP2 at the bottom, at wide open throttle, reads right at 2 volts. Now, we changed the voltage scales. The voltage scale on the left is twice as big. It goes from 0 to 5 volts as the one on the red, which goes from minus 5 to plus 5. Because we wanted to see if the shape was the same. We did this inadvertently, wanting to make both patterns look the same. We didn't have to. The computer is looking at this and saying, okay, APP2 goes between 0.5 and all the way up to 2 volts. If we look at the red one, it goes from 1 up to 4. So it's got enough differences in the two that it can tell from the two of them where things are. This is common. You're going to see systems that go the opposite directions. So let's talk about APP sensors. Don't assume all sensors are going to behave the same, move the same direction. It's not going to happen. Don't rely on scan data to capture a glitch, and we'll show you why that's true. We just saw a glitch. On the same vehicle you saw a glitch on, we recorded scan data. Scan data is on the left, and as you look, there is no glitch. On the DSO, there is a glitch. This is a problem. Don't rely on scan tool. The data is averaged and cleaned up. Now, you can see three different configurations. Both have the same voltage movement, move in the same direction, and they move the same amount. The two move in opposite directions. One's going up and one's going down. That's a common thing to see. Each has different peak voltages. What you really need to do is you need to get a, do a good sweep test because it is the effective way to find a bad sensor. And you've got to locate glitches that cause intermittent operation. And it may not all be in APP. You've also got a throttle position sensor working with an actuator motor running the throttle in this case. Finding good specifications is important. You need to know what's expected of these sensors. Are they doing what you expect them to do? And find places where they don't. So this is a quick course in diagnosing electronic throttle accelerator pedal position sensor. This should help you identify some problems you may not find any other way.